Who were the bosses? You said JJ, but who was actually in charge at the time? Was it Eric? It was Eric. So Eric was in charge at the time when I came in. Eric was, would have been the president, you know, for all, all practical purposes. He was our, our Vince McMahon, you know, he was the CEO. And then right underneath Eric, you had uh, JJ for the most part. And he was sort of uh, what w, what I don't remember ever really hearing his title, but what WWE always referred to as that vice president of talent relations, that right. would have been JJ Dillon at the time. What's your thoughts on Eric? Uh, I've grown to appreciate him more and more the older I got. Um, back then, I couldn't appreciate him the way I do now, not because I was the young kid that thinks I know better than the boss or anything like that. It was Eric, for the most part then, really concerned himself mostly with the whole NWO angle and the main event guys and that creative. And to be honest with you, hindsight 2020, I can see where that stuff full played in and of itself, especially if you're performing as a talent as well, like Eric, you know, came to be. And so most of the time at my level, and I would really even say higher above me, mid card and down, what trickled down to that was the other bookers and the other agents were mostly responsible for that kind of talent. So unless there was a big issue or if they were doing something specific with you or, you know, you just didn't have that much interaction with Eric. So I didn't have enough interaction with him to appreciate him. And uh, the most interaction I ever had with him actually was the last WCW show I ever did. The last WCW show I ever did was uh, a thunder and they had me wrestle Rick Steiner and Eric was coming back in and WCW was going to be sold. It was just a question to who at that point or to whom. And, uh, everyone was so convinced that it was going to be Eric and whatever conglomerate it was that he brought together that Eric was backstage at the show and he was kind of calling the shots like in the old days and used right. to assume he's the next guy. So we're doing what he says. And Eric walks by and I had just gotten through. They just killed the MIA gimmick. They had me back in my normal tights, had me, you know, ready to be a cruiserweight. And he walks by and just randomly goes, cut your hair. You look goofy and keeps walking. And I'm I thinking, what the I go, the guy never said two <laughs> words to me, and that's what he leads with, you know? That was my feeling yeah. at the time, and it hit me, because I thought that's one of the things that made me stand out and look unique. Right. And at the time, all these guys were coming out of the power plant, like Mike Sanders and Jinderak and O'Hare, and all these guys had the exact same haircut. Right. And I was like, what do you want me to do, have the Sean Stasiak haircut that everybody else has too? You know, the George Clooney <laughs> friends haircut? I mean, I don't. Okay, if you say so. I mean, I wasn't going to argue with him about it. I just didn't know if I saw the wisdom in it. And to his credit, to Eric's very much credit, my great appreciation and admiration, he came back a few minutes later and he explained to me, I was wrestling Rick Steiner that night. And uh, and he stopped me. He goes, hey, if, if I came off, you know, sound a little bit like, you know, a jerk a second ago, I didn't mean it. Uh, the, let me explain what I got in mind. When Russo was in there, uh, Eric and some of those guys felt like some of the older, more established talent that Russo wasn't necessarily high on got pushed to the side and lost some of their shine and luster for the newer guys that Russo pushed. And one of those guys they felt really did not fare well in the Russo era was Rick Steiner. They thought Scott got this huge push and he's big Papa Pump. Rick was always the dog faced gremlin and this tough guy that you just couldn't hurt him. And suddenly we've turned him into a little, little bit of a joke and he doesn't have, he's not seen as the monster that he was before. So they wanted him to just go out there and annihilate me and just have basically a squash match and stretcher me, bring me out in the ambulance, the whole deal when the thing's over. And we got it over so strong to this day. People still send me tweets and send Robbie t- tweets at the same time. And we'll ask him why we had heat, why he hit me so hard in the match, and why was he trying to hurt me? <laughs> and he's constantly having to defend himself on it. No, it was a great match. It was exactly what it was supposed to be. In love working with him. Great guy. I was happy to do that. And he goes, look, you go home for about four weeks, cut your hair, lean up a little bit because you know i put a shirt on when i was doing the money gimmick i didn't have to be late sure. he goes right. he goes lean up a little bit be a true cruiserweight when you come back i'll put the cruiserweight strap on you give you a little bit of a run with me. man absolutely right. awesome you know the, the boss finally has some good plans for me. that's great man i appreciate that so much so i did it went home and about two weeks later i watched nitro get sold like everybody else did live on mm-hmm. live on television you know and uh but to bring that full circle real quick and bookend it, 
a few weeks back, well, a couple of months back now, um, I was doing my uh, 60 minute time limit draw on ad free shows. And we were doing the bash at the beach uh, picture of Hulk Hogan when he made his big hill turn. And that was going to be the subject of our show. And John Alba, who was my uh, co-host at the time, you know, he said, let's kick this thing off. And before we kick it off, we've got a question. One of our, uh, you know, um, one of our fans wants to ask, and this is Eric from Wyoming. And Eric kind of did a run in on, on oh, nice. my podcast <laughs> and it's the first time I've been face to face with him similar like we are now in, in 20 years man at least 20 years and I put everything down and I stopped and I said man the older I get the more I recognize moments like this and I just want to stop and thank you I appreciate you so much I'm so grateful to you that you gave this young kid a shot that didn't know anything about the wrestling business had never been in the wrestling business had no wow. ties to the wrestling business and you saw something, you gave me an opportunity. I want to say thank you. Thank you. It changed my life for the better. My life has never been the same since. And I want to look you in the eye and tell you thank you. Because so few times in our life do we get a chance to really thank the people that's made right. these big impacts in our life. And we had this great moment with one another, man. And, and I appreciate him so much the older I get now. And I have perspective to not that I've ever been in the position that Eric was in, but I've lived enough life and experienced enough that I can imagine much better what it must have been like for him. 